On this episode of The Angels Take Over Show, I'm continuing my series on the transactions that almost killed me. So if you missed out the first part, I recommend you check that out first before you jump into this one, because it literally just builds right off where I left off in the previous one. This is part two of the transaction that almost killed me. Previously on The Andres Segovia Show. So I sat down with the tenants and I told them that it's in their best interest to cooperate with this transaction because that's the only way they'll be able to secure the funds that the bank is offering them if they leave the premises because now they're going to need it to fight the lawsuit. You're listening to The Andre Segovia Show. And welcome to The Andre Segovia Show, everyone. I am your host, Andre Segovia. In this episode, we pick up where I left off in part two of my short sell transaction nightmare the transaction that almost killed me so without any further ado let us proceed to finish off this story cue the creepy music i need a sip of water so the tenants do call me and tell me look andres um, we do want the, the the funds that the bank is offering us, so the we have discussed among ourselves that we will cooperate with you. Um, and please let us know uh, how the transaction get, is going. If anything comes up, uh, anything you might need, uh, this and that, please let us know. It's like I will keep you posted, and believe me, I will get this transaction closed. I call the, the client and tell them, look, I was able to secure the cooperation of the tenants and I had told them that whatever situation is going on between them and you is between them and you. My interest is a transaction that you hired me to negotiate with the bank and I will proceed with that. <clears throat> I didn't want to immediately mention this to the, to the client. But I had to because I needed their signature on it. That the bank was offering funds for the tenants to vacate the premises. So they eventually had to see that. So I wasn't, I can't keep it from them. So I had to tell them that yes, the, the bank is offering this and uh, they, they need you to sign here for, for this form and what they're doing. Oh, you should have seen his eyes lit up. Well, and I'm saying his as a as a gender neutral pronoun by the way so i'm speaking in generalities for everyone's protection here that was involved in the transaction from buyers sellers banks and uh tenants alike and eventually what you're about to find out as the snowball gets a little it gets bigger the the seller uh did not like that at all like i want that funds i want those i want that money i told him you can want it all you want and that's not yours. It's for the tenants that the bank is giving them. Okay? This is not going through you. This is from the bank. Because we need the property to be vacant. And the only way it can be vacated is a cash for keys agreement. Between the bank and the seller. I mean, between the bank and the tenants. And because you're the seller, we need your sign off on this. They begrudgingly signed. They were not happy about that. But eventually they signed. And uh, I asked him, hey, by the way, um, did you find anything at all about a second mortgage? Like, nope, nothing. Oh, okay. Uh, I spoke to their accountant too. He's like, do you know anything about a second mortgage? Like, I checked all the records. I don't see anything about a second mortgage. Oh, okay. Then maybe it's nothing. And I communicated eventually an update. And I asked, with, I asked that's when Ty was like, hey, um, um, anything on your end that you might have found because nothing's been found on there and they don't know anything about a second mortgage. I'm like, yeah, okay. No, it was just let bygones be bygones. Let, leave it alone. No, okay, cool. All right, so we proceed. And the buyers are like, okay, uh, let us know when we can proceed with our, our inspections. We just need the tenants out of there before we can do something and, and move in to, to, to check it. It's like, well, yeah, you can still go see it. So I got the buyers over. They got to see it. Like, oh, yeah. Um, the buyer shows up with uh, with her elderly parents that she's going to buy it for them and this and that. Look, I've been in this business on the buying side for quite a while before I became a professional real estate uh, a broker. I understand the, the, the game. I knew for a fact they were not buying this as a move-in home. 
they were buying this as an investment home that they wanted to flip because they needed to put on a face and I was not falling for it. But whatever, that's got nothing to do with me. I don't care what to do with the property. It's in their interest well, to secure it. So like, yeah, they like the house. They saw like, oh yeah, yeah, it's pretty standard fare for this kind of area. It pieces the demographic that they're aiming for. So there you go. All right, cool. Not my concern, whatever. So everything's proceeding seemingly as planned. Just hit that big old hiccup, right? With the, the lawsuit between the tenants and the and the seller that, that threatened to stall the the, the project or, or the transaction. Then the the bank um, kept having some glitches that I kept fixing. So when that was fixed, no more concerns there. <clears throat> so to make sure everything was still coming along swimmingly, I reach out uh, to escrow and ask them if any, anything else. And I asked for so-and-so. They're like, um, yeah, uh, so-and-so's not here. It's like, okay, can you just pass on the message for so-and-so so they can get back to me? Like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Not once did they mention to me that the escrow officer that helped me get this deal in traction left the company. I was left in the dark for about a week. Things were falling behind on the escrow side that the bank needed. And nobody there had any idea what to do because the only person that dealt with short sales was the escrow officer that left the company. Eventually, I get a call from the the escrow manager. Calls me up and says, "Hey, look, we got a, we um, we kept in the dark about a situation. What situation? The escrow officer you've been working with, uh, uh, she's gone. Um, we do have a new escrow officer. We're gonna I'm gonna get you connected with her. But I just need you to I just want you to know that so and so no longer works with us, and uh, her file has been passed over to the, the new escrow officer. Is that okay? Well, we're behind on certain things, bro." Um, we got to get on track because the bank needs certain documents that needed to be sent and escrow uh, is is fudging the numbers here because something's going on with uh, some of the update settlement statements that are, are not are not are not matching up so um, keep that in check uh, but uh, I need I need confirmation about something here so get get your get your people in order let's get it working let's proceed okay go the new escrow officer had no idea what the hell she was doing that was already bad. And she was being in charge of a powder keg situation with my transaction because the title company reached out to escrow because the new escrow officer checked in my file, communicated with, with escrow to talk about the, um, the preliminary title report that we had gotten weeks earlier. And it showed that there's that second mortgage. The second mortgage thing was like rearing its ugly head again. So like, okay. Um, whatever transpired between the the original escrow officer and that title rep, because they they were best of friends or something like that. Apparently, they stopped talking to one another. So when they stopped talking to one another, title was no longer operating efficiently and effectively on the file, and the escrow had no idea what the hell to do with my transaction. And the things that were falling behind that were needed to be turned over. Okay, I needed to get things for the buyer. I needed to get things for the seller. I needed to get things for, for the bank. Because technically there's two clients behind the seller side. The seller and the bank. And of course, exchanges between any other parties and clearing things to get ready for the eventual um, transfer of the property and the exchange of monies. And that wasn't happening. So like, okay... I need you guys to get your crap together. This is getting crazy. At the same time, the seller is ramping up his threats to the tenants that is threatening to sabotage the transaction. And I was trying to make it clear. Speak through your attorneys. Stop speaking directly to them. The seller was going to the property, knocking on the door, demanding that they pay the rent. Threatening them from the door. It's like, stop doing that. I was getting calls from the tenants. He's knocking at our door. Do you hear it? Holy smokes. It's like, sir, they are under no more obligation to pay you the rent because they're fighting this with you in the court of law because you're the one who threatened a lawsuit. 
So you trying to come ahead of the curb isn't helping things. You told them you're taking them to court, so they're going to fight you in court. So don't go demanding the rent over there. It's like, Andres, I'm going to evict them. Sir, I am negotiating a cash for keys. They're going to leave. No, they are not leaving without having an eviction record on their record. I want to make sure they hurt when they look for the next property. It's like, what the hell? It's like, dude, this isn't happening. I thought we had this conversation already. Nope, that's exactly what he started to do. He started getting eviction proceedings going. It's like, oh my goodness. Then the tenants were straight up panicked about this because they started getting a lot more people on their side to fight this. And like, oh crap, I'm going up against the clock. So I called the bank, the bank, yo, um, how are we looking on your side? We're looking good with the process. No, I'm this. We're missing this and this and this and this and that. It's like, oh my goodness. I call escrow. Escrow, they need this, 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 this and that. It's like, you need to get this going. Escrow wasn't doing it. My goodness. Hurry up. We already lost one week that you idiots didn't tell me that the escrow officer had left. Now we lost another week because the new escrow officer has no idea what the hell she's doing. You get your crap straight. We need to get this done. We've lost two weeks. Thanksgiving is upon us and I need to get the buyer's things going because we have a close of escrow date of the end of November. We were supposed to close this escrow in 30 days from the time that the bank had agreed with the buyer that we can proceed. And of course, getting everything ready. Look, that doesn't happen in a short sale. Never does that happen in a short sale. This can take about a year. High tense stress situations. But this thing was a powder keg and everybody wanted to get out of it and everybody wanted to make sure we closed before the holidays. The intent originally was to close before Thanksgiving. I knew that wasn't gonna happen, so I told everybody, calm down your expectations, that's not gonna happen. We're gonna close at the end of November. That is our goal. But if we can close before Thanksgiving, we will. Buyers, you already wired in your deposit, thank you so much. Get everything else lined up, I will close this. Then the buyer says, thank you, Andres, but this preliminary title report says that there's a, um, a second mortgage. Um, I've already been looking into that. It shouldn't be a concern. It'll be wiped away from the record. So you're gonna have clean title when you take possession of the property. So escrow wasn't getting it done. And because I told them, you guys need to get you guys need to get title on your side to make sure that they had they had put a strike on that second mortgage on that preliminary title per the previous escrow officer's um, notes. It's like, okay. And because the new escrow officer was not meshing with the title rep, they stopped talking altogether. So I was emailing uh, directly to the title company and telling them because apparently I had to be the freaking liaison because escrow wasn't getting the job done. And I even had to coordinate everything for the buyer to the escrow because escrow didn't know how to how to coordinate any digital signatures. They didn't know how to do mail carriers because they were in a state of chaos because they had to get every single other transaction in line with the new escrow officer since the other one just got up and left. I'm like, what the hell, man? So then, I eventually I um, I get a um, I get a, a response back from title and said, we're not we never agreed that we're going to strike that thing off the title. I don't know what, who told you that. We can't do that. It's illegal. You have to get a hold of, you have to clear this second mortgage. I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? It's like, I'm only conveying the message of what has been told to me since the beginning between the original escrow officer and you, that you guys have agreed that you will strike it. After that, title stopped responding to me. I'm like, what the hell? They stopped responding to any of the emails. They weren't talking to escrow. I'm like, okay, this is this is getting serious. And it's just, it, it's crazy. And by this time, I'm get, I have a lot of pressure um, that's happening. And it happens to be in a very busy season for every business that I run. Taxes and personal things that I had to deal with because I uh, um, got to get ready for 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 closing out the new the, 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 the new year and I got to prepare my own taxes and everything. So, my goodness, there's just so many things I had to get in order and this thing was taking up 25 of my 24 hours. I'm like, this is nuts. My phone would be ringing off the hook. Emails would be coming through. Misinformation, misunderstood. There was an error. I don't have this. This is missing. I don't have that. We're behind on this. I'm like, my goodness. What more can I do? This was a freaking favor. 
So um, it's it's crazy. I'm getting panicked emails, phone calls, text messages from the tenant side. The seller tells me that I don't he doesn't care what whether I succeed or not. I'm gonna go do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna secure my money. I have the bank telling me it's like we're gonna cancel this thing if we don't receive these things by this time because you know it's falling behind. And the buyer is like, what the hell's going on? And I'm like, I'm trying to figure this out. And escrow, no one is picking up the phone to answer me. Uh, no one's responding to my emails anymore. So I show up to their offices. I'm like, I'm here. Where the hell are you guys? I'm looking at all of you here. What is going on? So they're like, oh yeah, you know, sorry man. Uh, this not, That's not good enough. I have a ton of people that are gonna be in an uproar if this thing falls through. I have people that are gonna be on the streets I have people that are suing other people and I have others that could possibly sue me because of all this nonsense. You guys need to get your crap together. The only one I couldn't go confront personally was Title. Time was wearing on. We're approaching the finale of the, of the timeline. We don't make it, we have to extend. I'm like, how can I secure the cash for keys if, I'm, if, 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 if Esco doesn't even know what the hell to do? They, they keep screwing up their, their balancing and our numbers and stuff. And I, I knew I was going to come back to haunt us, which it did. So, <clears throat> but um, I get a call. It felt like a random call out of nowhere, a number I didn't recognize. So I got a call, and the call happened to be from the previous escrow officer. She called to tell me that she apologizes for the, the situation, that she had to leave. And I told her, I am so glad that you called me because I am in a pickle and it's because you left. They're like, what are you talking about? And I explained to her everything. And she's like, oh my gosh, I am so, so sorry about all this. You have to understand that there was a fallout that's been brewing for some time before I even got involved in this transaction uh, between her and uh, and the owner of the company who seemed to be doing fishy things inside the escrow that didn't really know what he was doing. So I'm like, oh my goodness, this is not something I needed to hear at this point. So like, I have a problem that I have an incompetent escrow officer handling my case now. And she's like, this is what I'll do for you. I will put my biases aside and I'll reach out to the escrow officer um, and the manager and I'll tell him, look, um, I'll finish this file for Andres. And that's it. I'm done. I'm out of there. But okay, that's how it's supposedly gonna go. So when the previous escrow officer got the file, she's like, "What is this?" And she was trying to make sense of the whole thing because it was just all over the place, and she was putting it all together. And apparently, uh, it's just like the expression: "There's two cocks in the hen house because they fight each other." That's exactly what happened between the two escrow officers. The escrow officer in the office was refusing to eventually cooperate with the previous escrow officer. I guess didn't like her for some reason. So that was becoming a problem because she wasn't getting everything she needed to. And every time she said that you guys needed to do this, the escrow wouldn't do it. So she was losing it. And I told I told the previous escrow officer, hey, um, so we have a situation where it's becoming more of an attention problem with this uh, thing that popped up in preliminary title about a second mortgage. A title says it's not gonna strike it. Uh, can you talk to the rep because she's saying that you both never agreed to do that they're like well that's not what we discuss so then the previous school officer t uh, uh, touched bases with the title rep and then the title rep told her what she told me never agreed so then the escrow officer the previous escrow officer told me like look uh yeah this is not going to strike it they're like that's not what was agreed upon though now what am I, what, what am i supposed to do and she's like, I don't, I don't really know what there is to do. I mean, I, I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. But this is what I'll do for you. I will go back to that office and I will work on your file from there because nobody's giving me anything. So at least on the escrow, on the transaction side of things, I will do what I can to help close this deal. It's like, well, thank you. So at least I have someone on my side. She got up and went. By the way, in the meanwhile, through this entirety of this transaction, it's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of documents that go back and forth, okay? So to make sure that everything is is proper, um, a professional broker and agent would 
typically hire an assistant in the form of what is called a transaction coordinator to make sure that all the T's are, are no, the, the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed, you know, all that stuff. So I had a TC that's been working with me since we opened escrow to make sure everything was in order. But the thing is, because there's so much back and forth and replacing documents, it was a little crazy. So I had, I had told my TC every single week, check the file, check the file. We need to make sure everything is there. Something comes up, you tell me, and sure enough, something will always come up that we needed this or we needed that. That's what was contributing to the slowdown with the, um, the, the escrow side and, and sometimes the buyer side because they, there were things that weren't being put properly on the documents or signed properly and dated. So like, my goodness. So that's why I had a TC working on this the entirety of the time. So after I was trying to get everybody coordinated, Thanksgiving's coming. I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And normally I cook for Thanksgiving. So I'm like, this is not looking good. I'm not going to be able to cook for Thanksgiving and I'm not going to be able to enjoy my favorite holiday of the year. So as a uh, time was coming, I'm like, let me see what I can do. I, I pick up the phone. I call title. It was a Monday morning. I call and, uh, Lo and behold, the one who answered the phone happened to be the title rep. And I told her, hey, I'm Andres from Mark One Real Estate regarding the property with the situation on the second mortgage. And as soon as I said that, she snapped at me. She said, I am not going to do what you're telling me to do. It's like, I, 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 excuse me? It's like, I will not strike it from, uh, from it. I'm not going to do something illegal. So stop asking me to do something illegal. It's like, I'm not calling you to ask you for something illegal. I'm calling to ask you what are the options what can we do to get this off the record because apparently nobody knows what the heck to talk about i've been reaching out with and i'm not getting any clear answers what must i do to get this off the record i need direction please help me here we are in a very intense situation and nobody's giving any clearance escrow's falling apart as much as you know because of the competing escrow officers over there and misinformation has been given to me and I was basing myself off that. I am not asking you to hold to something you cannot do. I'm asking you to tell me what can be done so we can get this thing done. And she said, okay, look, it's obvious that that bank that held that mortgage is dissolved, but their assets are normally transferred somewhere else. So the only thing you can do is find out where those assets ended up. It's like, you mean which bank now holds this mortgage possibly? It's like, yes. It's like, oh. See, that wasn't so hard. It's like, yeah. So, okay, go ahead. Like, thank you. That's enough for me to go on. I'll get on this immediately. So, I get a, I get on Google. Because what else can I use? Yeah, right, I'm going to use Bing. So, I started doing a search. I looked at the bank. And then, like, it was dissolved on this year, whatever. Like, a year or two after the... Um, the second mortgage was filed. So I'm like, wow, that bank went up pretty quick. Then I looked up the, the next bank over. Um, that bank dissolved too. So I'm like, crap, man, what the heck? Then I found another bank, and that's seemingly where the trail ended. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, cool. So I was able to get a hold of someone over at the bank, and I told them, hey, look, I got the situation. There's a second mortgage on, on title on this property in this state. The previous escrow holder was so and so. I mean, the previous mortgage holder was so and so. And before that was so-and-so, and it looks like the liquid assets are now under your possession. What I need from you is to show if the mortgage has either been satisfied, as in nothing is owed, I need something to that effect, or if you do owe something, you need to get on board right now with the current short sale so you can have your mortgage paid out of the proceeds of the short sale. Because escrow is going to need your information, Tiles going to need your information, and they're going to need you to, to also show satisfaction of that debt because this is a short sale. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for letting us know about this, Andres. We're looking. We're going to look it up, and we'll let, we'll let you know. So I got a call back and say, Hey, guess what? It's settled. Like, oh, thank you, God. Some good news. So like, okay, great. So then like, okay, here you go. We're emailing you the the certificate to show that this is all over and done with. All right, great. So I got it. I forwarded it to title. And so the title's like, look, this is what I got from the bank. And they're like, oh, good. But where's the assets? Like, what do you mean? Well, according to this document, they say it's settled on their side because they sold it to somebody else. Like, what? It's like, yeah. Uh, I looked at the form and nowhere. 
did it say who they sold it to? I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Back to Google. Search, search, search. Nothing. I called the company. He's like, yo, you sent me a form. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, it, it doesn't help me because it says here that you guys sold the asset to somebody else. Well, yeah, that's why it's settled. Well, yeah, but that's not what I'm looking for because then that means the mortgage is still outstanding. Now I got to get a hold of that mortgage holder to find out if they settled it or if they are going to lay claim to the property. Like, oh, yes. Okay. Um, let me help you look it up. It's like, well, look, I found the bank's name, but I don't have a contact number for him. It's like, well, it's okay. I'll look it up on Google. So I got the information. It was a bank in Louisiana. It's like, okay, cool. So I got the information. I called the bank. Uh, in Louisiana, they're in Louisiana time. So I called and was talking to them for, um, for a little bit. And eventually I get to speak to the vice president of that company. And I tell them about the situation that I'm faced. They didn't sound all too happy about it. <sighs> Whatever, you know. It's like, well, is it settled or is it not? Because if it's settled, then I need a document to the effect to show this. Um, and if it isn't, to, you know, um, to, for you guys to lay claim to the property. Like, no, it's settled. Uh, we didn't sell it to anybody else, it's settled. So that was that. And they're like, okay. And they, we hanged up. The emails were going back and forth. Actually, let, let me recap. Uh, it, the, the exchanges were through email um, to show that it was settled, but they wouldn't give me a certificate. So we needed that for, for title because the emails are not enough. It's not legally binding. So we need something written professionally from, a, from an inst a financial institution to show that there is zero balance due. So I'm like, okay. And uh, I kept asking. My emails were being ignored at that point. And this was about a week into this whole thing. Like, my goodness, this sucks. This is when I finally call because uh, I do get the vice president to answer the phone. And then I tell her, I am Andres calling from Mark One Real Estate here in California. And she's like, oh, it's you. I shouldn't have, have answered the phone. Give me one reason I shouldn't hang up on you. I'm like, oh my goodness. She's like, ma'am, please listen. Like, I didn't want to do this transaction. I got tenants that are going to end up on the street no matter what. The, the bank that's settling this short sale is willing to give them cash for keys and I can't get it if I can't close this deal. And I can't close this deal because preliminary title shows there's a second mortgage that's outstanding that you're telling me that's settled. And you won't give me the certificate to prove to title to strike it off so I can close this transaction to get the buyers to buy it and settle with the bank so the tenants can have some money. I'm begging you, please help me. She's like, fine. I'll, I'll have my attorney call you. It's like, okay, thank you. Um, I, I spoke with him, very nice man. Um, I, I gave him the number because he needed to send the document directly to um, the, the title company. So I gave him the, the email uh, and uh, the contact information for him to be able to direct the information properly to them and what they needed. So, okay, great. So I gave him that information. Remember, he's in Louisiana. So that was... Uh, that was a Wednesday, it was a Thursday. He reached out Friday again, and he called uh, that afternoon, um, late hours from his side, and nobody at Title answered him, And with, to which then he called me. And I apologized that this attorney was making time to communicate and get something directly out to me, and a Title failed to do this. I was so infuriated that weekend. <clears throat> I I needed to cool off and I don't know how. It was a very high stress time. So that Sunday night, uh, leading into Monday, I email blasted everyone involved in the transaction. I let them know everything that I had to do because none of them were doing their job and how it culminated with title leaving me hanging and I finally got the bank after they finally told me what the heck to do in the first place instead of just no no we're gonna do it we're not gonna do that it's like I am asking you what do we need to get it done I got the answers and everyone failed at their job I made that as clear as possible 
that the attorney in a different time zone called on separate occasions to ask title what do you need nobody called back no one responded to emails they failed to get it done and i said get your act together or i will sue I didn't say I will sue, but I threatened it in there in different legal terms. But I'm just giving you the gist of my legal lingo when I said it. Um, people were uh, offended in the right way when they realized the powder keg situation leading up to that Thanksgiving that I needed to secure the keys from the tenants with the promise that I will close this deal. And because every, I kid you not, I'm summarizing an event that was about three to four months in the, um, as it all played out, that every single day I was getting calls and emails, text messages of something going wrong. And this is the Blackberry days. I love my Blackberries. But the blinking light became a, a trigger of anxiety. So right before Thanksgiving, <clears throat> I was driving to Chino between Diamond Bar, the 57 to, to Chino, through a cutoff, it's a, it's a place that goes through a canyon. So I'm in California, for those that don't know. So um, as I'm driving through there, it's a canyon area. And because the phone was always like ringing off the hook for whatever reason, I, I, was, I was so like nervous and ticked all the time that uh, during a curve, I was trying to pick up the phone to read the message that was coming through. Cause I'm like, what now, what now? And I nearly drove off the cliff there. I swerved and I uh, was able to regain control while I, was, while I was driving, so I didn't swerve out and I didn't hit any oncoming traffic. That's when I realized this thing's going to kill me if I don't close it. And secondly, I cannot be triggered even by spam because the email that I got was a spam email. I, that was enough to trigger me too. I'm like, oh my gosh, it was not, it's meaningless. So I, I ended up buying a Pebble as a wearable so then I could control a little more. It's like, okay, that's not worth my time. If I need a call, I'll call. But that's why I ended up buying a Pebble, the Pebble Steel, which I reviewed at the, my YouTube channel. <laughs> but um, that's why I ended up using wearables and I haven't stopped using wearables ever since. So the title company um, did apologize to me. We're able to connect with the attorney and they were able to receive the documentation for for a title to strike officially and properly the second mortgage off the list since it was settled. They don't have to draft up new documents and go get going from the beginning because uh, it was a new um, a company that needed to open their own short self proceeding. We didn't need to do that. So thank God for that. And it was Tuesday before Thanksgiving that I had already arranged. The tenants had called me and said, hey, uh, we're picking up the, the last of our stuff on Tuesday. And you, you can come at nighttime then we'll, we'll give you the keys. So I showed up and there were the kids getting into the car. They were crying. It's like, oh my goodness, when I got there, I'm like, crap. How am I not gonna cry? This is, this just sucks, man. So I get there and um, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I asked the, the parents, can I speak to you inside the house? We walked inside the house, it's empty. Nothing's there. The decorations have been taken down and everything. Like, oh, this so sucks. So, and I told them, thank you. And as I was talking to them, one of their relatives slash friends runs in there and says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand right here. I'm like, okay, good for you. And I told them, here is everything that we've got to. And this is the escrow close date that we're aiming to close. And as soon as it closes, that's when I wire and I need information for where the bank can send you the funds. The other woman that went in, that was supposed to doing a service for them, said, don't listen to him. He's trying to steal your money. I'm like, what? All he cares about is his seller. He doesn't care about you. He just wants the keys, and you're never going to hear from him again. I'm like, woman? Like, this is none of your business? It's like, they had been given written documents as to what the bank intends to do. And I'm telling them like, that I need the information for where the bank can forward to them. And I 
cannot get it forward to them ahead of time. Like, no, you, you said you're going to give them the money for the keys. They cannot get the money. And as I explained to them, the only way they can is through the close of escrow. This escrow is not closed. So therefore, they cannot get their money. And it's because of that that I brought a gesture of good faith. And I pull out of my pocket a thousand dollars in cash from my savings account. I say this is a thousand dollars, and I'm here to give it to them in exchange for the keys. It's like no, you promised them. I didn't promise them. The bank promised them. This is a thousand dollars from my own pocket from the savings account for my one-year-old daughter, my first child. This is was this meant to be for her college funds, and I'm taking it out and giving it to them because I trust them to give me my one thousand dollars back when i close this deal and they get their money i expect you to hold true to your side that when you get the funds you'll call me so that i can get my money back because if i fail to close this deal there's no reason you have to turn my money back and i don't get paid unless this deal is closed no one's giving me a cent to this point and i brought us all the way to here against all odds i brought us all the way to this point so don't tell me i'm here to steal their money this sucks. I care about what's happening here. And I want to see this done because I came to do this as a favor. I didn't want to do this, but I'm seeing it through because it's in everyone's best interest for us to get done. The lady stayed quiet. They didn't say anything else. The tenants um, acknowledged, they agreed. They said, well, we'll give you the money back once we get ours. Thank you for your gesture. And they gave me the keys and they stepped outside. I made sure all the doors were locked. I stepped outside. And the couple walked uh, hand in hand, sobbing as they went to the car that was taking them to their hotel. And I walked back crying to my car. I'm like, I need this to be done. This is where we take a break. <laughs> and we're going to wrap up the story in part three of my short sale nightmare. The deal that almost killed me. That means I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you made it to the end. I hope that means you liked this episode. So by all means, to show your support, hit that like button down there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you please would, share this with somebody you know that will benefit from the content of this channel. See you in the next one.